Jewish uncertainty in the days of awe. The days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, known as the days of awe, are a time of reflection in which Jewish people focus on repentance, giving to charity and seeking reconciliation with God and man. They've had a row with people around them in the family, they go put it right during these 10 days. They do so in the hope of securing a favourable judgment from the Lord for the year to come and keep their name inscribed in the Book of Life. Jewish tradition teaches that every Rosh Hashanah, the Lord pronounces judgment for the coming year on each individual life. And 10 days later, on Yom Kippur, tradition holds that he seals that judgment. In other words, they got 10 days to put their life right. We're about halfway through this time period at the moment. And in uh, Israel, the normal greeting of Shalom has been temporarily replaced by a phrase which means, may your name be written in the book of life. I don't know the Hebrew for that, but that's what's going on at the moment. Now, Almighty God chose the Jewish people as his own. And amongst the historical characters, as the nation was being formed, of course, was Moses who led three million people out of Egypt. As the last curse was being proclaimed and, and executed against Pharaoh, then Moses was told to put blood on the doorposts and the lintel of the houses in Exodus 12. Now, this miraculous deliverance is now celebrated at a feast which is called Passover. But Passover is only one of seven appointed times or Moedim that God prescribed for his people. They're described in Leviticus chapter 23. Now I'm just going to read a couple of verses from that chapter. In uh, Leviticus 23 verse 24, say to the Israelites on the first day of the seventh month, observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial day announced by the blowing of trumpets. And you move down to verse 27, and on the 10th day of the seventh month will be the day of atonement, which is called a holy assembly, and afflict yourself by fasting, penitence and humility. So that's the instructions for these two days that I mentioned. Rosh Hashanah, which is just gone, on the, the first day of uh, Tishri, which was September the 15th, and the 10th day of Tishri is on the 24th, a few days' time. So that's where we are now. All throughout Jewish history, God required his people to atone for their sins by one specified method, sacrificing animals like lambs, goats and bulls. And the blood was sprinkled on the people and the people's sins were covered. Once the temple was constructed, the high priest would take blood once a year behind the thick curtain of the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur to make a yearly sin offering. And without this blood sacrifice, there could be no repentance, no forgiveness of sin and no having your name written in the book of life. Now, this is, you can look at some references, Exodus 32, 33. Whoever has sinned against me, God said to Moses, I will blot him out of my book. There's further study uh, references in the notes below the video. But there was a big unforeseen problem which Jesus prophesied about in Matthew 24. He said, not one stone of this temple will remain upon another's, Matthew 24, 2. And about 40 years later, on the ninth day of the month of Av, the Roman army destroyed the temple in AD 70. Now, this disaster meant there was nowhere for the priests to offer the burnt sacrifices to God, as they'd been instructed by Moses. So learned rabbis had to come in with a replacement plan. They formulated a prayer, which is called the Al-Chet Prayer, and this is a long confession of uh, an extensive um, list of 44 sins. And the Jews now, on the Day of Atonement, they recite this prayer with a striking of their chest, uh, recognising that they've done that uh, sin. It's a sign of grief 
over having committed that sin. Now, this confession, along with repentance, is believed to grant forgiveness to the penitent of heart. In other words, this prayer or this reciting of uh, confession, al chet has replaced sacrifice. Man's system has replaced God's system. Repentance has been redefined by the rabbis. These declarations are believed to serve as a substitute for the sacrifice that can no longer be made because the temple is no longer there. In this period of 10 days of awe, the Jews will greet each other, as I say, instead of with shalom, they'll say, may your name be inscribed in the book of life. So people's minds are focused on this, I hope my name is going to stay in the book of life. They, of course, ignore, continue to ignore the ultimate blood sacrifice made by Yeshua, and uh, the Apostle Paul was very sad about this. He said in Romans 11, Brethren, I would not have you ignorant of this mystery, because blindness has in part happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And then there shall come a deliverer out of Zion and turn away ungodliness from Jacob. A deliverer is coming. That deliverer, is the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Jews are still in partial blindness and uh, this coming Yom Kippur, they will continue with the recitation of Al Chet until God removes that partial blindness from the Jewish eyes. Jesus of Nazareth made the only valid, once and for all, blood sacrifice at Calvary when he died on the cross. He did once and for all sacrifice. No need to keep on repeating sacrifices. He did one sacrifice for all. Praise God. I'm going to do one more um, video on the days of all. So join me then. Thanks for listening today. Bye-bye and God bless you.